Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, where we take a glance into blockbusters, indie films, and everything in between. I'm your host, Christian, and as always, I'm joined by my partner in film, my co-host, Devin. And today, we're going to be giving our spoiler thoughts. This is full-blown spoilers for Shogun episodes 3 through 10. We actually covered episodes one through two and a separate video, which I will link in the podcast episode notes of this episode. But even though we're covering episodes three through 10, we're generally going to be talking about the entire season of Shogun collectively. Again, this is going to be a spoiler review. So if you have not seen Shogun, if you have not finished it, definitely log on Disney plus log on to Hulu it's all there waiting for you. You got the the dubbed and the subbed version. I actually found that out um, as I was watching it week to week. I guess the dubbed version, much like what they did with Squid Game, uh, the dubbed version of Shogun is it's in like the extras tab, so it's not like just in the main um, episodes. The main episodes, it's the it's the hybrid between the subbed and the English speaking actors. And then there's the dubbed version, which all the Japanese actors are, they're voicing their own characters. So it's still those people actually voicing each other, but it's just dubbed over with English. So I found that to be pretty interesting, but before we begin today's episode, you can listen to our podcast on podcast platforms around the internet. That includes Apple podcasts, Spotify, Google podcasts, and more. And if you are a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X, or you can email us at filmoptics at gmail.com for any movie-related questions. So, Devin, happy Thursday, or Thursday, I should say. Um, we seem to always record on Thursdays for some reason. I guess it's just one of those days. It's crazy how... Yeah, today is Thursday, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's NFL draft time. I know, dude. We gotta be watching. We got, what, four, three hours until the draft hits. Hopefully we get some, some good pickings this year for the good old Steelers. So... You know, we, we got some nice prospects as of right now, some nice trades, but I want to see some of the fresh meat coming in. But uh, you got your eye on anyone you think the uh, Steelers are going to pick? Or are you kind of just holding your breath? I don't know. There might be, not be a trade. There be a trade going on. Who knows? The excitement of, of draft night. Anything can happen. That is very true. Very, very true. So, hey, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But how's your week been otherwise? It's been a pretty solid week. No complaints, really. Um, a lot of TV to catch up on. We definitely dove right in. Um, obviously, we had to finish up Shogun. It wrapped up on Tuesday, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And then we also wrapped up Fallout and uh, also got caught up on X-Men 97. So I've not seen the latest X-Men 97 episode. I'm like maybe 10 minutes in. I started watching it earlier today, but... I got sidetracked with, you know, my actual job. (laughs) So, you know, that definitely takes up precedence. But, yeah, I just didn't really have too much time to squeeze it in. And I knew that we were recording after uh, work hours for this. But I do agree there's a lot of TV watching and honestly more to come. Like, I have to gear myself up. I got to watch both Strangers movies. Uh, I have a few Blu-rays that got sent in by Warner Brothers. I have to watch and uh, record as well as finishing up X-Men 97. So it's um, it's crazy, but I, I got to say for Fallout and for Shogun, specifically for this episode, you know, those are two episodes that are, you know, in or not episodes, but series that are in the bag as of right now. Um, it felt like it took a while for Shogun to finish up, but it, I don't really blame for the week to week. It's just, I think each episode... It was, it was a slow burn from time to time, for sure, but it was still good. But that is what we're going to be talking about here today, ladies and gentlemen. Again, we're going to be giving our spoiler thoughts on Shogun. So if you have not seen the series, turn back now, go watch it, and come back and listen 
to this. And you can also listen to our spoiler free review of the first two episodes of Shogun. Again, that will be in the episode notes of this podcast. But Devin, are you ready to dive into the world of feudal Japan? Oh yeah. Shogun. All right. So without further delay, we'll be right back after this introduction to Shogun season one. Hear me, my son. I alone will tell you the truth. Death is the only punishment here. I have not told you my family name, but it is well known in Japan. Many years ago, a great injustice stole everything from me. I have learned one truth. The enemies are everywhere and friends nowhere. To show your true heart is to risk your life. Because death can come for us at any moment. And we are back with our Shogun Season 1. Technically, this is Episodes 3 through 10. We are covering the uh, final eight episodes, but it is going to be a retrospective of Season 1 altogether. So if you have not been watching Shogun and you still want to listen to this, hats off to you. You're a very brave soul. I know some people like to watch or listen to spoiler reviews of certain shows before they even get into the show. They want to know everything that happens before watching the show, which is a bit odd for me, but Hey, if that floats your boat, it's all, it's all Gucci. (laughs) That's a strange one. Yeah. It's, it's a strange one for sure. Um, but yeah, I know people who are like that. People will call, will not even call in. They'll text me and be like, Hey, like I'm thinking about watching this show. Have you seen it? Like, and like they, they want, to know if it's good from the get-go. And I always tell them, like, well, you know, I think it's good, but some some television shows do take a little bit of time to gain that following. Not every single episode is going to be a banger after banger after banger. Like, there are anomalies out there for sure, but in the retrospect, is tell them, you know, you got to watch for yourself because that's, that's not how uh, television works. But as a refresh for the synopsis for Shogun, this series is set in Japan in the year 1600, and Lord Yoshi Torunaga is fighting for his life and his enemies on the Council of Regents unite against him. When a mysterious Euro- European ship is found marooned in a nearby fishing village. So that kind of just sets the president, and of course, you know, the rest is history as we are talking about season one today. So. So we're just going to dive straight on into it. Uh, Devin, what are your thoughts of of season one overall? You know, because we've been watching this every week. We haven't really talked too much about it off air, just like our initial reactions as we usually do with like X-Men 97 or like other movies. But I'm curious to know your overall thoughts. So take it away. Yeah, overall, uh, I think the season was, it was definitely... Um it was just a quality show overall. Like you mentioned, it's not going to be every episode's a banger. Like there's going to be some slow burns and there's going to be like a lot of, just a lot of obviously dialogue and, and kind of deception going on where, um, obviously the main comparison the show has been getting is game of Thrones because we haven't had, um, a, a, I guess you call it a set piece, like hour long drama. Yeah. Period piece drama in a long time. It's kind of, there's not a lot to compare it to, I would say. Um, at least not that it's at the mainstream like this one has. Um, for me, it definitely did remind me of, I mean, from my perspective, I obviously didn't watch Game of Thrones, but for me, it's House of the Dragon because um, it is kind of that hour-long, like, character-driven drama. Um, and it kind of had the same feeling for me with this, with this season where sometimes you're just watching and then there's characters that pop up and you're not really connects with them and it just doesn't really have the impact that you would expect it to. Um, certain characters that you might not even recognize pop up from time to time. Um, but that's just me. As far as the quality goes, it, it was always there. I do feel like you mentioned it did kind of felt like it dragged on a little bit, which is interesting because usually um, when you do the week to week, it does have pretty success. If, if the show is good, that has a good success of um, just kind of, holding on to that popularity and holding on to that hype. I feel like this one kind of lost some of it. I don't know really what 
a reason would be to pin down on that. I mean, it was 10 episodes. Um, kind of, like you mentioned, it was a lot of slow burn, which definitely can catch up on on people and kind of weigh in on, on what they're feeling about the show. Um, I did enjoy overall, like, as far as the week-to-week release, I did enjoy the memes that were coming out from time to time, how it's on Twitter, like the current one where where uh, Blackthorn is... is Telling um, Mariko something, and then he, she just says the complete opposite in Japanese. To, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. those, those are all great. Um, the trend. Had to get, had to get a meme, a meme review in there because it's important when you when you're judging the quality of a show. How how much memes can we get out of it? But as far as the characters go, like obviously Blackthorn is he's he's my guy. I mean, he's got to represent um, he's got to represent us. Uh, a, paler types um, in the show because he's the only one he's, he's the one we got he's the representation yeah. for us and yeah. it's fine by me it's it's we're, we're represented very well on every other show so it's fine if we're at the, the minority on one show out of all the other ones so obviously Mariko played by Anasawai was just amazing throughout um, and then of course you get Tornaga just kind of like we mentioned in our, in our initial review just He's always killing it, Harioka Sonata. Like he's just always killing it. Um, I will say, I do wish there were a few more, just a few more action scenes here and there. I feel the same way for Followed. Actually, we'll talk about that in our review. But I wish there were just a few more action scenes, like dispersed throughout, to kind of keep the blood pumping a little bit, especially with a 10, 10 episode run. And then also, we'll get to the to the ending and the finale. But I feel like I have seen. A pretty popular opinion that it just kind of fell flat a little bit it just didn't really hit like people wanted it to i think part of that is because of the ending of episode nine and what happens there i feel like they needed an episode to breathe after that because it's such a big event but they weren't able to like like wrap it all up in that last episode but in a satisfying way because they had to have all the grieving done for what happened in episode nine and episode ten Instead of giving it all into a finale, I think they could have had um, an episode barrier between those. Yeah, so you're saying pretty much the season finale should have been more of the penultimate episode. Because I kind of feel the same way. Yeah, either either that or an episode between the penultimate and the finale. And then obviously like more added on into the finale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, my my thoughts kind of align with yours when it comes to, you know, period drama series, you know, you have Game of Thrones, it's period drama, but it's also it's fantasy more so like it's a fantasy show, but period drama is like kind of the setting. It's it's a hybrid between both because you have the White Walkers, you have the dragons, you have the children of the forest, so on and so forth. But, you know, when it comes to other period drama pieces like The Last Kingdom, uh, Spartacus, uh, Vikings, things of that nature, or Rome. Um, I, you know, we, we looked at this show when it was first coming out, like we saw like the initial trailers and we're like, oh, this looks really cool. I had no clue it was going to be more of like a hybrid between, um, uh, Japanese, uh, speaking dialogue and English. But I mean, I, I liked, I like the show. I think it's great or I, sh- I think it's a really good show, but I don't think it's like great great like it's not it's not a global phenomenon like it's going to be for game of thrones and obviously like you said everyone is comparing this to game of thrones because it is the closest period drama series we have to game of thrones and i know ign released a opinion piece an op-ed saying that shogun is everything that game of thrones should have been which i kind of disagree with the headline but when when you read into the actual article they talk about how different they are but it's like i still disagree with the whole shogun is a limited series which means it's one season one and done we are not getting a season two this is adapting a book it is adapting the events of the book um, putting into a t- television series and for a limited series, I think this is very good, but I don't, I can't put it like in that great pedestal because like you said, it does, 
drag on at times, but it is a show like we mentioned before in our episode one and two review that you you can't you you have yeah you have to give the show your undivided attention. You can't like turn it on in the background like you would like a sitcom, like while making dinner or you know doing whatever, cleaning up around the house because you're going to miss a lot. But when it came to the characters, there were some characters like Mariko and Blackthorn that you obviously are going to um, latch on to and Laura Toronaga as well. Um, I can't say there's too many characters for a limited series because I think they did a great job with the production. You know, the writing is probably the best part of the entire show is the writing. The production is is exceptional as well. Like it is beyond exceptional, but you know, as we're watching week to week, like you had those banger episodes, you had, you know, Mariko's death in episode nine. And, you know, as we were getting closer towards the end of this limited series, I felt like the show was finally just beginning, which is, I'm not sure if anyone else has, that take out there, I haven't seen too many people's, but I know some people weren't super crazy on the finale. And honestly, I wasn't either. I thought it was good, not great, as I mentioned before. Um, I I feel like I feel like a lot was missing. I feel like there was a lot of things that weren't resolved. Like we kind of get like a flash forward of Black Thorn's life, like at the very beginning of the season finale. Yeah, that that stuff was pretty strange like you're kind of around me of the squid game where we have mm-hmm. like a similar aging up in the finale it just kind of didn't feel like it fit in it also kind of obviously it's it's just based off of an existing project and, and right and book but it kind of spoils the ending a bit when you know that obviously he is still alive and turns old yeah and i think you know with a lot of star wars um series out there um <clears throat> uh obi-wan <laughs> Obi-Wan for sure uh, when it came to Luke Skywalker where they kept putting Luke in danger and it's like we know he's going to be fine yeah. <laughs> like nothing can happen you sure to about him. that danger yeah you sure about that? <laughs> but yes uh, I think that was the the biggest takeaway like the biggest question in everyone's mind the biggest question for me at least was you know will Blackthorn be able to return home or is he you know, um, stuck in Japan for the rest of his life. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so crazy how something like that could happen. Based on the, the, the flash forwards, I guess, I mean, he looked like he had white children. So I'm guessing he made it out and went back home and knocked up a nice English lady. <laughs> he said, Grandpa, is it you? You were savages. You were savages, Grandpa. And it's like, you know, he's, I think he's, it's like, was was he just thinking about all this this entire time? And, you know, it was all a flashback. Yeah. Yeah. Was it all a flashback from from the very beginning? But no, I mean, there, there's so many great moments in this series. But like you said, you had mentioned uh, a lack of action. And for something set in feudal Japan, you know, this is very political heavy. But again, there was a few things I was a little lost on because it's like, there's so much going on and you want to catch up. And I watched it in the original, you know, Japanese uh, language, you know, with subtitles and whatnot. And that's what I love about the series the most is that even having that, that language barrier there when you're, uh, you know, you're basically following Blackthorn. And even after Mariko's death, it really starts to set in that, like... You know, he he's learned a little bit of Japanese throughout his time. He's actually like getting pretty fluent towards the end. Yeah, which I was very surprised. But it's like, you know, you kind of you're you're here, you might as well learn the language. Um, so I, I did enjoy that immersion because it felt, you know, it's something that has I'm sure has happened many a times to people, but it really just shows how alone uh Blackthorn is without Mariko and of course without his consort because she went to become a nun. But yeah, overall, I mean, I, I enjoy the show. It's just, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk about like, Oh, you know, this was released weekly. And I think the fact it's not the fact that it was released weekly. I'm fine with it being released weekly, but I think it's the pacing of the show itself for each episode. Each episode ran about maybe 40 to 45 possibly 45 minutes to an hour 
at least. But they felt longer than that. It also it also felt like there weren't like there weren't like a lot of events like happening. Like, yeah. Like event episodes. Like I'm not saying every episode has to be like that, but it felt like mm. like part of the weekly release. The the biggest draw is that you get on Twitter the night of or the next morning, and you just see yeah. all the reactions like flying in. I I feel like I just never was really seeing that for this show. Like I was seeing memes and whatnot, but I wasn't really seeing like, oh my god, what a crazy episode, or like, oh my god, I can't yeah. believe that happened. Like with X Men ninety seven, we're getting that every week. Yeah, and the same thing with Game of Thrones. Like that was that like what you just explained, like that is what game of Thrones brought to, you know, every Sunday night, like, you know, everyone's gathered around the television. Everyone's watching game of Thrones. The next day you go into work on the Monday, everyone's talking about the episode from Sunday night. And it's like, Oh my gosh, can you believe this, this, and this happened? You know, it's moving the story forward and Shogun has that as well. But as I mentioned earlier, I, I really feel like, Towards the end of Shogun, I felt like the show was just beginning, even though so much had just happened. It's almost like Dune Part 1, where Shani's like, this is only the beginning. But it's like, there's actually more to that story. But with a limited uh, limited a release or limited series like this, you know, it's a one and done. And I think when I think on other limited series where they're able to wrap up everything within 10 episodes. I always go back to Mayor of Easttown with Kate Winslet and Evan Peters because that was that that had a clear beginning, middle and end. Like everything wrapped up in a perfect perfect little bow. Even with something like Love and Death on Max where you know, it's pretty much similar where, you know, everything is wrapped up by the final episode. And I feel like things weren't wrapped up by the end of Shogun. Not saying that they purposely left it cliffhanging. It kind of just, it kind of just ends. You know, we were talking about with Abigail and Radio Silence, um, that directing duo where, you know, they're, like everything else, like the beginning and the middle and like most of the end, like the climax is great. But then like, when it just ends, it ends. But you, we we find out who, you know, the the ongoings of why Blackthorn can't leave. You originally think that it's Mariko to have uh, that destroyed his ship for in order for him to leave after her death, but then you find out that it was actually Lower Toranaga to almost test his or Black to test Blackthorn's loyalty, almost in a way, but. Yeah, it just it kind of just ended, and I was like, I mean, it was good, but like, I was like, okay, that was, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, what an incredible show, you know? Like, there, it didn't have that. Not not everything was resolved, and I know I'm like kind of going all over the place, but I'll pass it back over to you. Do you have anything else you wanted to touch on that we haven't had a chance to um, discuss yet? Yeah, I don't want it to seem like we're like being completely negative on the show like the quality the quality is there the entire 10 episode run like you can just tell the production value value the writing the sets the locations like it's all so meticulously well done and it's all it all feels what i imagine to be very accurate to the to the period and to the time and to the to the actual history of everything and i think they did a great job of that um just it just i guess we're just kind of spoiled as far as event television goes and the weekly mm-hmm. release is kind of it's what you hope for when you have a re- week release. Like that's why it's the preferred method for so many people because you want that that weekly outcome and that weekly excitement to to look forward to. I feel like this yeah. one just kind of went on a bit a bit long and it felt like it was it was taking a bit to get to where we needed to be. And then by the time we got that ending, which felt more like episode nine, which we mentioned before, that felt more like the ending. Um, once we got to that, it's like oh, I guess we're done. It's over. And it just doesn't feel that satisfying. Um, but as far as the actual quality goes, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely there. Like any time that they com- uh, committed some puku, like even the action scenes we did get and like the deaths that we got, like they were gruesome. Like it was, it was there like 1000%. Like the production and the writing was spot on. It's just, you know, towards the end, you know, the pacing, 
it got a little iffy, but I think that's also to the uh, to the factor of we were watching Shogun every week. We've been watching X Men ninety seven weekly and Fallout uh, season one released all at once. So you're also or at least us we're trying to watch that at the same time on top of movie releases. So like there's just a lot going on, and I don't blame Shogun for that, but I do agree it's not it what like it's. It's a really great show, and I, I'm glad that FX has this and Disney has this in their, in their utility belt because it, it does show that, hey, they can make other shows. Like, FX is obviously, you know, part of Hulu and, do, you know, all that all that jazz. But, I mean, the, the characters that we did follow were fantastic. And, like, we got a lot of great moments in this show. Um, I don't know if I'll ever go back and rewatch it. If I do, it might be like the dubbed version just so I can get a better understanding. Cause like I said, there was, there's a lot of reading, which is fine. It's just, you know, you're, you're so enamored of what's going on on screen. You're like, Oh my God, like every word is, is felt with such passion and you, you feel like you're there in 1600 feudal Japan, but you know, uh, it's just, I just wish it was, yeah, I wish we got would have gotten like maybe like one more episode because for a limited series, it didn't feel like it had a final, uh, like a final ending, like a finite ending there. But overall, like, I, th- I thought it was amazing. Like just everything that happened. I know we can't talk about everything because we'd be here literally the entire time. But I guess really quick, Devin, what is like one of your favorite uh, scenes from the show that you remember? Yeah, I mean, obviously, end of season nine or episode nine, like, literally blows you away to a degree. Um, I also liked, I don't remember which episode it was, but where Blacksmith, or not Black, Blackthorn and Mariko are having tea with, um, I think it was, was it Mariko's husband, husband or former husband? Yeah, they're like trying to out drink each and other. And it was like, it was real intense <laughs> and kind of funny at times. Yeah. And he gets all drunk. I thought that was entertaining and um, <laughs> trying to think what else stood out. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's a lot. I think one thing that really stood out for me outside of that scene is really just a relationship between Mariko and Blackthorn. Cause, you know, even though she was his translator, she was a part of this family where, you know, her father betrayed Japan and all this craziness was happening and she's effectively paying for her father's sins. Um, but I, I have to say, probably the funniest thing or the thing that really one of the things that really stood out to me was when Tornaga's son tries to kill his uncle and he just slips on a rock and this sl- smashes his head and he dies and it's yep. like what a way to go yeah like but like that's so realistic that something like that can actually happen um and also the fisherman who was killed due to um <laughs> When Blackthorn becomes the um, when Blackthorn becomes the he he's like bestowed a certain type of luxury upon him like he has like a certain title I can't remember the title right now but he has the pheasant and he like hangs it up and he's like oh he's like I'll let this like stench for a few weeks and then it'll be really you know it'll be like perfect for eating. And they keep asking him, they're like, hey, um, can we take down this pheasant? And he's like, no. And he's like, you know, if, if anyone touches it, kill them. But like, he didn't mean that. But that's where the dialect and the language barrier comes in, where anyone in Japan who has that type of status, like anyone working underneath them, they're going to take that seriously. And we saw that happen with one of the fishermen who tried to remove it and he was killed because of Blackthorn's orders. And that also goes back to Mariko saying that, you know, the, the way like words mean more to people in her country than actions or actions do but it's like you know the words are really what stick and she kind of mentions that throughout their their time together and he and blackthorn finally realizes that oh you know my my words do have consequences here you know it's obviously in in england's like you joke around with that kind of stuff but like you know they they take things 
very seriously in, in that culture. And, you know, he, he saw the, um, the consequences of that. But those are just a few things that stuck out to me. So let's get into our final thoughts and ratings here for season one of Shogun. Devin, I'll pass it back over to you to give your final thoughts and your ratings on the show. Yeah, final thoughts. Um, definitely, like we keep mentioning, it's a very quality show. Like everything about it is very well done. You can tell how much the creators and the cast and the crew all cared about it because they were very serious about just being accurate as far as the source material and just the source location and the source language, all of it, obviously, the cultural significance of all of it. It felt very, it felt like it was very taken care of. And that was, that was very nice to see. Um, as far as my personal preference um, and obviously you know i'm not much of a period piece type of guy and that kind of that kind of weighed down on me a little bit here with this show obviously it is very much so a period piece and it kind of affected my personal viewing experience mm. um definitely enjoy the quality overall but as far as the score goes i'd probably give it like an 80 overall like obviously very well made there's a lot to like here but for me personally it's just kind of similar to house of the dragon where it's just hard for me to 100% get into one day Devin we'll, we'll get we'll get you there for at least for season hey, I, hey I tried you did you did try you did you see you experienced Game of Thrones without having to watch eight seasons I mean I still think you should because it is fantastic but I know you never will <laughs> I know you never will yeah, but probably not it's it's totally fair and also uh the it just came to me the uh the status that was uh bestowed upon the Blackthorn was the Hatamoto. That's what it was, the Hatamoto. Uh, Because, you know, he had, like, his own consort who was, you know, he was very respectable of because usually when you have your own consort, they're, like, kind of like your side piece, Um, at least (laughs) in feudal Japan, as as we saw many times over. But, yeah, he was bestowed the Hatamoto um, after, you know, being, uh, quote-unquote, loyal to Toronaga. So yeah, um, as far as my final thoughts and scores, uh, my score is actually going to be the same as Devin's. I, I think it's 80 out of a hundred for the entire series. I, I think that is a very fair score to give it. Like, you know, as we've talked about, like the, the production of this, the realism, the language barrier, everything about this was like amazing. I think it's a well-made television show. I think it's a very good television show, but didn't hit that great bar. Like, you know, if towards year's end, you know, I know we have a few other seasons to get through. This will definitely end up on like a top 10, like television shows of like my favorite of 2024. But I don't know if it would be like in the top five. Um, simply just because of this being a limited series, as I mentioned before, it didn't, it didn't feel like it had a final ending like it did with Mayor of East Town. And I, like to this day, I still think about that ending of Mayor of East Town. I need to go back and rewatch it, but it's just so freaking perfect. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is amazing. And like, this is what a limited series should be. Like everything wrapped up in a tiny little bow. And unfortunately, my only real gripe with uh, Shogun is that, you know, by the time we hit like episode nine, because, you know, they kept talking about this war that they're going, you know, they're going to war and they kind of give you like a flash forward of what will happen, but you never see any of that unfold on screen. And I think that was probably the biggest disappointment is that, you know, the entire show, they're gearing up for this massive war because of Tornaga you know, not wanting to give up a seat of the of the regents. And we never like we see the small battles leading up to the big war, but we never see the big war. And I think that's the biggest gripe that I have with the show is that, you know, by by the end, I felt like it was just, you know, the story was just beginning. But, you know, uh, the showrunners said that this is a one and done season. And, you know, um, they did mention, of course, they always say, you know, oh, if there's a story to tell. Well, you know, we'll try to revisit it. But at this point, I would just let it be as its own. I think it is a well-made show. So, you know, hats off to the cast and crew and company who were able to put this together. And, yeah, I, I think uh, 80 out of 100 from for both of us is a fair shake, which would give the podcast score for Shogun Season 1 and 80 out of 100, of course. And with all that said, that does conclude today's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, 
Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your preferred podcast platform of choice. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and threads at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. And don't forget to share an episode of our podcast with a friend, whether it be your mother, your brother, or your significant other. Share the love for the Film Optics podcast with a movie lover in need. And now, really quick, let's take a sneak peek of what's coming up next on the show. So now that we have Shogun done and over with, definitely keep out a lookout, excuse me, for our Fallout Season 1 review. I believe we're just going to be getting into spoilers for that because all episodes were released on day one. So, you know, we got that that we're going to be covering as well as Challengers. And I believe we're also going to still try to cover the Quiet On Set documentary, uh, docuseries, I should say, all together. But my gosh, uh, those are just a few things that are coming up on the podcast. Um, so you can also listen to what's out now. You can listen to our Abigail review. It's it's a bloody good time. I thought it was awesome. Devin loved it as well. And we have our Monkey Man review and our Civil War review just to top a few things off for things that you guys can listen to. And of course, I will... I will post our episode one and two episode or review of Shogun in this episode notes so that everyone can uh, listen to our initial thoughts of the show because it did take a bit of time to get the ball rolling with that one. But yeah, like it's it's a good show. I'm kind of happy it's over because now I can like focus on <laughs> focus on other things, you know. So it's it, I'm glad that 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 part of my uh, viewing experiences is, is over not in a bad way it's just there's just so much else out there to watch but again with all that said thank you all for listening if you enjoy the show please take a moment to leave us a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and stay connected with us by following us on Twitter Instagram and threads all that social media garbage for the latest updates that was Devin and I'm Christian signing off and remember life is like a movie so go out there and make it a blockbuster Peace.